you know, I just, it's, it's, you know, doing spots is something I've done for 12 years. It, it's, it's not as fun anymore. Uh, doing them. It's not as fun anymore to have to make small talk with Anthony Jeselnik, who shared an article uh, saying that comedy had an alt-right problem that the New Republic decided to publish. Uh, Anthony Jeselnik, who made his bones doing Boston Marathon bombing jokes, has now decided he's the arbiter of what is and isn't appropriate to be said on stage. And I have to go and speak to him like he's an actual human being. That's what I have to do. That's part of my career. I have to uh, speak to him like he's a person. He's a great joke writer. The comedy's not really for me. I'm more interested in human beings, carbon-based life forms. But what he does is, you know, great and people love it. But that's what spots are. I have to sit in a green room and uh, talk to him, uh, even though I know that he shared an article uh, that seeks to uh, take everybody that I know's career away. Um, but you know, we got, I got to sit there and go, yeah, how are you? Oh, they're good. Yeah. The audience is good. Good to see you. And I shit on Austin all the fucking time. I shit on it all the time, but you know, a lot of these people in LA, I mean, they've got another thing coming right now. It's like, were you typing in a song or something? Jesus Christ. Um, I hope she's putting your dog in there. Seriously. <laughs> She's standing there with her mouth open. Um, I was getting a lot of emails to our listener email um, about Tim Dillon and his podcast and him sort of, you know, I mean, frankly, talking shit. Mm -hmm. uh, did you hear about that? How do you how do you feel yeah. about that? OK, I heard about this. And like, listen, I don't really know Tim Dillon. I know who he is. I've heard of him. I didn't realize that he was in L.A. I think we must run in different circles. I think he makes most of his money on the road and doing his, his podcast on, on Patreon. Uh, but I've certainly heard of him, and we have friends in common. Like, I, I know the guy, and uh, from what I know about him, I don't dislike him, but just know uh, there's no relationship there. But for the past two weeks, I guess he moved to Austin with a lot of the, the Rogan crew, people who went to Austin, and had come back to L.A. for like two weeks, and we were on a lot of shows together. Like a bunch of shows together. And he was a nice guy. Like I was like, I, w I wonder what to expect. Is he going to be cocky? Is he going to be a jerk? Is he going to want to go up at a certain time? And he was just very nice in, in the green room. Uh, polite. Uh, didn't make a big deal or anything. I, I never really watched his set, but I had to bring him up a couple times. He bailed on a couple of shows here and there. Like, and you, people, people cancel shows all the time. Uh, but it was fine. And we talked for maybe a couple minutes. And then uh, I know he like leaves town. And I come home from, I guess I was doing my, my last bit of shows, and I see on Twitter someone's like, wow, like Tim Dillon just trashed Jesselnick, like awesome. And I'm like, well, he, he did? Like on stage? Like what's going on? And I, see, I listened to like the first like five minutes of his latest podcast. And uh, did you listen to it, Erica? No, but I, someone transcribed it pretty much. Yeah, he's, if I, and, and tell me if I'm saying this wrong, but I think that this is like what it was. He was like... He starts the podcast and he's explaining to fans who went to shows because he would bail on shows and fans would get very upset because they paid to see him specifically and would be mad. And I was at a couple of those shows. So he's, he starts the podcast explaining why when it's not his show, if he's not doing an hour, it's not as important to him. And sometimes he has to miss it for, you know, maybe he just goes to a restaurant, maybe some friends call him up, whatever. But he's like, stand up in L.A. is not that fun. He's like, stand up in L.A. is sitting in a green room making small talk with Anthony Jeselnik. And Anthony Jeselnik is not a human being. I'd rather be talking to human beings, uh, carbon life forms, I think he uses yeah. the phrase. And, uh, and it was just awful having to make small talk with him. And then goes on to trash me for, once again, for, this, uh, for that article that I tweeted uh, that he said threw his friends under the bus, which I will get into in, in a second. Uh, and I thought this was very funny. And I don't know, maybe he goes on later on in the podcast and comes back at me. But I just thought it was so funny for someone to be polite and nice and have ample opportunity to say anything to me that he wanted. Like, the small talk was like, how's the crowd? Like, all oh, these outdoor shows are weird, huh? Like, very simple, like, I'm being polite because I don't know you. And we're in a room together, like, just the two of us or, like, one other person that it would be awkward if I said nothing. But I don't know, like, Greg, back me up on this. Like, I'm not Johnny Small Talk. <laughs> like, no. no one's like, God, hanging out with Justin, like, just a ton of small talk. Like, it's not my thing. I'm just, like, being polite. And he was being polite. So to hear him like go off like that, and and it's and if you've ever heard his podcast, he has a completely different voice. Like he's, he's I assume it's a character. I don't know if he does the same thing on stage, 
but it sounds almost like a Rush Limbaugh type, like bombastic, like everything is, it's like, it's very, he's, he's an entertainer and he's entertaining. So to hear him go from like, mm, yeah, the crowd was good. Yeah. It's a little cold out, whatever. Uh, to this, like screaming into the mic about how awful it is to make small talk <laughs> with me. I honestly, I was, people are like, are you mad? Is there a beef? There is no beef. I got to tell you, and I, maybe this causes beef. I am flattered. I am flattered that someone would not like me, be nice to my face all week, and then wait till they left the city to record a podcast talking about how awful it is to, to make small talk with me. And listen, I'm not the best person to be in a green room with. I'll admit that. Maybe if people have been like, you're not really like a normal human being, I'll take that as well. But I was flattered that he waited until he left. And I, might, I probably never see the guy again. So I do not care. You probably uh, I thought it was will. funny. Don't we might think? run into each other. And listen, if we run into each other again, like my friends were like, what? Because I have friends who he has gone after on his podcast before who've talked about it. Just been like, it's weird. This guy just like started yelling about me and his fans are tweeting at me. Uh, so I told my friends, I was like, yeah, I got Tim Dillon. You know, Tim <laughs> Dillon talking about the podcast. And they were like, what are you going to do if you see him again? And I was like, oh, I'm for sure going back into the small talk. Like, I hope Tim wants to talk about the weather because that's what he's getting. Crazy Like, I clouds. can't wait to do it. Yeah, like, how about this, how about this heat, Tim? Huh? How, can, can you believe it? Has, it? has it rained in a while, Tim? Like, I, I just, it just, I don't care. Oh. Um, I think it's funny. But uh, I, I hate it, that when, like, it, when, when your when you're personality on shtick. air is uh, bombastic, to go that route is... Uh, is disappointing. No, he's I a, a free with thinker. He's a I'd Rogan rather someone guy. be chill backstage and be bombastic in their in their act than be bombastic all the time. I'll I'll go with that. And like he did nothing that upset me all week um, at all. That that I I don't care. And what he said didn't bother me. Like it's weird. I, I, we must have talked for three minutes total over like the two weeks we we were in there. And it was it couldn't have been more banal. That uh, that I, I just thought it was I thought it was very funny. He sees but, you know he sees you as like a good um, target or you know like someone that you know people, his his fan base is gonna enjoy him punching at. Sure, punching I mean, they at. seem they seem to enjoy it. I'm sure there's overlap in our fans a little bit. Uh, that's, that's fine, but it, but he might have a point, okay? Because I <laughs> talking about this article. And this, I've talked about this article a couple of times on the podcast that I tweeted out an article months and months ago. I mean, I, I don't know how long ago it was uh, with the pandemic thing going on, but I, I, I it was like February. It, it was a, it was a long time ago. Like it seems like forever ago. And I go on a podcast uh, like a week or so ago. This guy, like one, whenever I do a podcast, uh, everyone starts asking me. And sometimes I just forget that I don't like doing them that much, and I and I and I say I say yes. So I had done Bobby Lee's podcast, which was fun to do. And then polarizing though, you look at the comments on Bobby Lee's podcast. People either into it or think I'm insane for just like staring at him the entire time. They're like, he didn't laugh at Bobby's jokes. He's being a jerk. It's like I did my best. Uh, I like Bobby, but I, I did my best. But uh, this guy Jeremiah, a guy from the comedy store, was like, "Will you do my podcast?" And I'm like, "Sure." You know, I'll do all kind of, and I'm, it's like, at this point, I'm almost like doing him a favor. It's just a silly, weird, imp- improvisy podcast. And I get there and he's like, hey man, I got a lot of, I take questions for the guest. And a lot of people asked to, to talk about Big J Okerson, who was mentioned in that article. He's like the one friend of mine who was in that article I tweeted, who was upset about it. And I haven't really talked to anyone about this at all. No one's really... I want to say cared's the wrong word, but like my friends aren't in that world and like don't understand it. So it was just like, there's, no, there's been no talk. And I've had, I mean, I've had a friend be like, don't talk about this ever. Don't ever bring it up. You just tweeted it. You didn't make any comments. Like don't say anything about it. It'll go away. It's fine. But he says, people have been asking about this. And I'm like, you know what? I can clear this up so easily. Like this will be, this will be fine. This will be the perfect way to do it on this podcast. Go ahead and ask me the question. And my plan is, ju- he, so he asked me the question, and the rest of it is so just silly and stupid, except for this one part. And my plan is just to go, listen, I read an article about stand-up. I thought it was interesting. I tweeted it out. I didn't give it a lot of thought. I'm sorry I hurt my friend. He's upset. But like, I, it wasn't a vendetta. It wasn't a hit piece. Like, I don't really know the people involved. I just kind of liked the article and tweeted it out. But then I keep talking. 
I keep talking and I keep talking about the people in, who were in the podcast and I'm getting everything wrong. Like after the fact, it got, it got published uh, like a couple days ago. And after the fact, like I thought they had Alex Jones on the podcast. Alex Jones has never been on the podcast. I don't know why I thought that, but I was like sure of it. And I would like, I got people's names wrong. Like totally wrong that I was like, I, tr- and I realized I truly do not know what I am talking about. So I walk back all of this. I regret, I regret tweeting this article out so much that I almost want to do it again just to like punish myself for doing it. That like, I didn't reread the article. I didn't like, I didn't educate myself on the people in the article. I just started talking out of my ass and people, I, I'll say this, I walk it back. I walk back everything I said after the first like two sentences and I deserve every, every bit of hate I get from their fans. They can give it to me. I was wrong. I, I'm, 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 frankly, I'm embarrassed for, for saying things where, where I've not done the research. The Alex Jones thing is, like, is hilarious to me. And they did have Milo on, which is like Alex Jones light, I would think. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was just so wrong in everything I said that I was like, God, I can't believe I said this so confidently. Uh, but if I just stuck to my plans, it would have been fine. But now that I've said what I just said about that article, I will never talk about it again. You can hate me if you want to. I have no problem with that. Sometimes, and Greg can back me up on this, I just talk without knowing what I am talking about. It, and it I happens like, on this podcast quite a bit where you're telling a story that, that I was involved in. And I have such a bad memory. It's not like I'm going to disagree with you. Yeah, this but is I'm, not a good I example. Pretty much, no, but it is. I pretty much know... That like he's getting all these facts wrong, but it doesn't matter for the sake of the story. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell him. You know, Jessel Nick lives in in his world sometimes. That's right. That's right. I do, and I, I enjoy. I enjoy the sound of my own voice. Maybe it's the pandemic. I've been lonely, so when I start talking to people, I just I overshare. But and my manager has always been like, you should get media training. Because you were so bad when you talked to a journalist and you just like keep on talking and dig yourself into these holes that if you knew just to go on and promote what you're going to promote, you would be better at this. But as a comedian, I'm like, you know, I should be free to go ahead and say whatever I want. But I, uh, I, do, I, st- I do everything stopping short of an apology. Uh, walking back. You pretty uh, much just did it. That podcast. was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything quite like that. I, but, the, but I don't feel too bad about annoying them. I, I mean, listen, guy, if if nothing p- else. P- people can get mad. It's fine. There is no there is no beef between me and Tim Dillon. Like, I truly think it's funny. Um, and I don't know if he's like truly upset or just doing it uh, for content. If I had to do three podcasts a week uh, by myself, I would I would uh, yell at all kinds of different people. Um, One thing I that, noticed at that show, by the way, was like and I, it made me think of you was there was a lot of um there was like a lot of comic complaining about uh cancel culture which i which like just isn't even like there were some there that were like not my cup of tea but there were some like really good comments that i enjoyed most of their set and they were awesome at it but there were still some of that complaining about cancel culture which was like very repetitive when you're seeing like six or seven in a row i know i mean it's I don't it's like it. it's uh I don't like I, it. I, I'm on the record as I don't I believe know. in cancel culture, and I don't know why people complain about it, um, but they do. Uh, so yeah, you got you know what everyone knows where I stand on uh, on the old cancel culture. Um, yeah, I, I and I don't know who you're talking.